to be able to open up a doll and start mixing Adobe Atmos literally that quickly and get some stuff like immersive is really incredible, man. I love Studio One for this. And hey, man, as a Pro Tools guy, Studio One is starting to look kind of sexy. Hey, boo, let me holler at you. Okay, so this is a sponsored overview of the newest features in Studio One Professional 6.6. But as I was diving into the software, I started to get a little bit excited about what I found. So I kind of want to show y'all a few things. One of the first things I'm gonna show y'all is how easy, I mean like really easy and just intuitive it is to mix in Adobe Atmos and other immersive formats in Studio One Professional 6.6. It literally blew my mind. And then after I show you this simple and fun Adobe Atmos mixing process, we'll talk about Studio One Plus and its brand new pricing strategy that I really think is kind of brilliant. They've even added a new feature that's gonna make distribution way easier. So let's just go ahead and jump into Studio One right now. Okay, so I'm in Studio One. And if you've never used Studio One before, it's really kind of simple to navigate, man. I'ma just go ahead and hit this plus button to make something new. And in this case, I want to actually go ahead and mix in surround. So I'm gonna choose mix and surround. Everything else is pretty much set up for me as I need it. My bed format, 7.1.2. We'll worry about that later. The monitor format, I can actually choose whether I want 5.1, any of those type of things. I'm gonna just rock with stereo for now. And as I'm doing this, I'm gonna start a Adobe Atmos mix for y'all real quick. You'll be able to actually monitor and listen to it in immersive audio once I change a few settings. Just, just watch me, man. So we're gonna call this um, the GLS. This stands for The Greatest Love Story. And I'm gonna actually, this is a song by Lydia Caesar that I'm gonna be releasing soon, that she's gonna be releasing soon. But I'm gonna actually do the Dolby Atmos mix right here in Studio One. So I'm gonna just go to Dolby Atmos. They've even got a tab for a tutorial if you need help with that. But you got wavy, man, so you good, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. All I did was, uh, let's just uh, get it some more specific name, GLS Dolby. I'm gonna hit okay, and boom. Once I open this up, I'm presented with the Dolby Atmos renderer. So one of the newest features in Studio One is that now you can actually monitor in Apple spatial audio. So if you have no clue about Dolby Atmos mixing and immersive audio formats, then you probably don't even know that there's like a, a problem that there's been for the last couple of years that Apple and its spatial Kodak, we haven't been able to really listen to it. Apple Music just in true Apple fashion, uses an entirely different codec than other platforms uh, for their immersive audio. So when we are mixing in Dolby Atmos and exporting our Dolby Atmos mixes, Apple is actually changing that and using a whole nother codec. So the mixes are kind of close, but not exactly to what we heard in the studio. Now in the studio, we'll be able to set our monitoring to Apple spatial audio, which is really dope. Another feature that I really like about working in Studio One is that you got the ability to actually have a different playback device and recording device. So I can set my playback device to, let me see if I can, let me see if I can do this, man. I got my AirPods here because I would love nothing more to be able to mix Dolby Atmos using Studio One, using Apple's spatial audio codec and using Apple AirPods, like then I got the mix exactly how, how Apple wanted to be heard if I do that. So I just set my main sound from my computer to my uh, AirPods. And then let's see if I can set my playback device, boom. I can actually set my playback device to the AirPods too. So just like I thought, man, like uh, it is literally doing exactly what I needed to do. So I'm monitoring as if I was listening to Apple Music straight from my phone, like I was in the gym or something, and I got my uh, AirPods on, man. Super dope. I found my files that I wanna use for this mix. I'ma simply drag them and drop them right into my timeline in Studio One. And again, shout out to Lydia Caesar. This song is gonna be releasing very, very soon. I'ma just play a part of it. coming straight through my headphones as I thought. And if y'all are, 
oh, you know what? I ain't gonna be able to listen to the headphones because then y'all ain't gonna be able to hear it. So um, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna do the earbuds right now. I'm gonna just keep this set to the audio interface so that y'all can actually hear it. So let me go back to Studio One. Dang man, I really. But when I'm mixing, though, best believe I'm gonna set that up. So I'm gonna go to my playback device and then just for y'all, man, because I love y'all. I'm gonna make sure that I got that there. And then I'm gonna just use these headphones to monitor as I'm mixing this. So let me just come here. I'm gonna set some levels real quick. All right, maybe even organize this session a little bit. Oh, that's because, okay, I got a track in here that should not be in here. Let's just get rid of this track. All right, we're going to turn that down. Just... So currently the process for mixing in Dolby Atmos is to mix the stereo and then I have my stems that I've brought into Studio One here just like this. So in on these stem tracks, I got like my drums as a stereo pair. I got my piano, my synths, my other effects and stuff like that all as a stereo pairs. Even got this here, uh, my effects track. So now y'all are actually listening to the Apple Spatial Audio Kodak. And then I can do some stuff here. So let's just start like with this piano, for example. I love that they have this panner that allows me to basically. This is like the most intuitive and coolest little spatial audio panner that I've seen yet. And then they even got the height control. All right, now the piano is above us. You can double click on this to open that panner up. So maybe I want those pianos to be on the side. Who knows, right? We're gonna do the lead vocals there. Let's have our uh, choir. Let's raise some height on the uh, choir track. And there's a certain techniques that I like to do in Dolby, like is, is really cool. Like the drums, for example, I also like to send the drums like to the rear channel. So I'm just gonna add a bus here and hear that on this bus we're gonna call this drums uh rear and this could be really for anything that i want in the rear and then i'm gonna simply just pan those to the back right and then maybe even elevate it a little bit and then as i turn that send level up then the drums not only will be stereo in my front but they'll be in the rear too Right, and for stuff that you want to have like moving around, right? Maybe I'll go to these. Alright, they got some background. Right, so these, let's open up that panel here and widen these up. Right, and then you see how I'm automatically getting Adobe Mix. It literally just took me a couple of seconds to open up the DAW, and now I have a mix that is immersive 
already. How creative you get with this is really up to you. You can even turn stuff into objects, like maybe uh, these guitars. If I turn it to a spatial object panner, now that is an object. And then so like I just got more control over how that object is moving. Maybe I'll even um, get some automation going on. Let's go to touch mode. And then on my guitars, let's just find out when they come in. Maybe I'll just spin these around a little bit, right? Listen. <laughs> Right, and now you see my automation is drawn in very easily. <laughs> now I'm going everywhere I go. If you're using headphones, you should be able to perceive this as being immersive. We got the visual. We can see the guitars kind of flying around me. We got all these different views here, right? So six point, and, and let's go, if we just go Adobe Atmos by Neural, see the difference. Now I'm going everywhere I go. When my girls see me, they want to know. What's the thing, All I can do is smile. We can monitor in stereo. Right, and of course this mix needs a little work, but to be able to open up a DAW and start mixing Adobe Atmos literally that quickly and get some stuff like immersive is really incredible, man. I love Studio One for this. And listening to that Apple Spatial Audio Codec, again, if I wasn't recording this video, I could literally be mixing in my earbuds and listening exactly to how it would be sounding to someone who's listening and monitoring from their iPhones or whatever in their uh, Apple AirPods, man. That's lit. Now, obviously, when choosing a DAW, one thing that a lot of us have to consider is going to be the pricing. So let's just address that now. Before today, Studio One Professional had two ways to purchase. One subscription plan called Studio One Plus, and you could also opt for the perpetual license. Just like most subscription plans, with the subscription, you will never really own the software, and you just might be stuck with a lifetime of subscription fees. <laughs> we don't want that round here, man. Not round here, partner. <laughs> Not round here. And for professionals, that can be a really scary thought, especially as technology changes so rapidly and you really want access to all those updates that come with having a subscription. Here's how it works. With the new Studio One Plus hybrid plan, a perpetual license to Studio One Professional Edition will be awarded at the end of each annual subscription period, providing access in perpetuity to the latest complete version of Studio One Pro available at the end of the user's subscription. So ultimately for y'all, all that means is you're gonna pay all year for your annual subscription, and if you decide to continue that subscription or not, you will get a perpetual license. All current Studio One Plus annual subscribers whose annual subscription began or renewed on January 1st, 2024, will be eligible to receive a Studio One Pro non-updating perpetual license once their subscription ends beginning January 1st, 2025. And the prices are not going to change. To me, this seems like a win-win for anyone who's already on the subscription, uh, on a subscription, and it kind of reminds me of the Waves update plan a little bit, in which you can keep the perpetual license for the version that you own, but if you want to get any updates or anything like that, you have to subscribe, all right? So keep that in mind. If you choose to cancel your subscription after the year is over, you actually get to keep the perpetual license. It's kind of like a, a rent-to-own type of situation. With the Studio One Plus hybrid plan, you get all the benefits of the subscription, including Studio One Professional DAW, the Notion notation software, you get plugins, sounds, learning, collaboration tools, cloud storage, and some more stuff. And at the end of the year, if you decide to cancel that plan, you still own the latest version that's available whenever you cancel, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm going for that hybrid plan. And if I decide to opt out, at least I have my perpetual license, you know?
And as of all of that isn't enough, not only can you create, edit, record, mix, master, and you can work in immersive audio all in Studio One. Now you can even distribute your music to all the DSPs thanks to the new partnership with TuneCore. This gonna make your life so much easier and make the process from creation to distribution much more seamless. And you're gonna save some money at the same time. Studio One Plus users get 50% off new TuneCore plans. And if you're already a TuneCore user, well, you're going to get 25% off your Studio One Plus plan. Win, 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 baby. I'm super excited about the future of Studio One. This has been the easiest way to actually start working with immersive formats that I have seen in a DAW to date. And I think that the, um, the future is looking really, really bright for Studio One and this hybrid pricing model, man. Not to mention the ability to monitor directly from your DAW um, using the codex that people are gonna be listening through. To me, I think that is part of the most genius part of this update. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavyproaudio.com. Check out wavyproaudio.com for all your studio needs, including your Studio One Plus or hybrid professional license, man. Hit us up. Let me know down in the comments what you think about mixing in Dolby Atmos um, in Studio One. Let me know what you think about these new pricing models and should other dolls kind of adapt a similar pricing model or do you think this is just another one of those gimmicks? I look forward to reading y'all comments. Be dope.